Let's now move to our third theme, and we'll be projecting ourselves in the future and talking about breaking technologies. So my first question is, can we expect anything new, any, some kind of revolution in terms of architecture and shape of warships or submarines? Um, if we are thinking about the future, I think about 2040, 2050, something like that. Uh, at that time, ocean will be under permanent surveillance. It will be very difficult to deploy surface ship without being detected. And also, underwater, everything will be much more difficult. So um, for that, uh, Naval Group uh, think uh, about a new type of warships and submarines. And if we are talking about submarines, uh, we try to design uh, every two years or uh, as often as possible a uh, concept ship. And uh, we, we try to develop it uh, just like a real submarine. So we are not talking about uh, just design. We are talking about a, a, a real uh, way to push innovation and to drive innovation for our engineers. And uh, talking about um, a new uh, submarine concept ship, uh, we call that uh, SMX 31 E, uh, we are talking about uh, submarines able to operate in 2040, 2050. Uh, the main idea, of course, uh, is to uh, take benefit of new energy uh, power, like new big battery to remain submerged without needing to come back at periscope depth. This sort of submarine will be able to remain submerged uh, around 20 days, maybe 40 days, uh, at a speed comparable of a nuclear uh, submarine right now. Um, and uh, the second point is that uh, she, because we are talking about she, she will be uh, very uh, stealth. Uh, and for that, we are trying to uh, study the sort of biomimetic shapes we have suppressed uh, the sail, uh, or reduce the sail at the maximum to avoid uh, active uh, reflection of uh, sonar waves. We are talking also about um, uh, skin materials, coating, cladding, uh, to absorb uh, acoustic waves also, um, to reduce also the signatures um, and to, to take advantage of, uh, of drones, the main propulsion motor, are outside the pressure hull uh, as a rim-driven uh, motor, each side of the submarine. And uh, thanks of that, um, there is no screw, uh, no propeller at the uh, aft part of the submarine. And we, we try to put in this part uh, the torpedo room, the bomb shop, which is also a big workshop for drones. And we, we can see that uh, this sort of submarine is a little bit different from what we are thinking today. And for that, inside the submarines, we don't have the big cylinder as usual. We have a sort of box uh, vertically shaped uh, to build this submarine uh, with a lot of place outside to store drones, uh, UUV, but also UAV. Uh, because at that time, it would be very easy to operate that from a submarine. The way you see the future is very different from what we have today. It's going to be an all different submarine in terms of just the shape of the submarine. It's something that we haven't seen yet, for example, in the current yes, submarine. Yes, so the, the idea is to push threshold away and to develop technological blocks uh, to be able to uh, fulfill operational needs of navies. Uh, so this concept ship could be the future, but uh, some part uh, only could be the future of, of that. We have also a very uh, different, uh, very br a brand new upstream, and something which is very difficult is to think about screens uh, in 2040, 2050. No one is able to uh, talk about what could be the type of screens uh, you will use in this submarine. Something I want to say is that uh, in 2040, 2050, um, we are still thinking about the man in the loop of this submarine. This is, of course, a very smart submarine. Um, everything will be easier for crew members. Uh, we try to suppress all ancillary tasks for crew members. We try to simplify the industrial being an understandment of the tactical situation for a commanding officer, of course, everything will be easier, but the man is still in the loop. And what about the first warship? Will they be that different also? 
we have the same process uh, in uh, uh, reflection on new design of new ships. Uh, one, one example could be the uh, inverted bow of the new FDI uh, frigate, which provides the uh, sailors the capability to go faster in uh, very heavy seas coming from the head of the ship and also reduce the radar cross-section in this area of the, of the ship. But we have also other reflection and we also work on, on the concept ship like just the, the, the submarine with a new propulsion system, with new shape of hull uh, down below the water to uh, uh, increase the performance and the uh, acoustic discretion of the, of the ship. But also, we were talking uh, earlier of the integration of drones. Uh, one of the main challenges of the surface ship is to go to, to see uh, further than, than now. So using drones, uh, we can uh, provide a very, very long range detection. So we can reduce the uh, above water uh, mass, for example, of the, of the ship. Uh, and so that's all the reflection that we have in Never Group in our R&D process to provide to the sailors uh, solutions in the future to uh, fulfill their operational requirements. We know one of the big issues for, for the navies is the, um, the maintenance of submarines or warships. A navy doesn't want to have a ship which is going to spend like half of the year um, in the shipyard. You want, you want your ship to be uh, as often out at sea as possible. So is there any revolution also to expect uh, in that field, can we really improve the maintenance of warships and make them more available? Yes, of course, it's a great issue and a, a, a great uh, th theme of uh, naval group. Uh, of course, navies want to deter, want to uh, gather and share valuable intelligence, want to uh, be able to act firmly if necessary, and among it, all, they want to be deployed very far from their own port for a very long time. So the first point is availability at sea. And the main point is uh, to be able to use big data, flow of data, which are now terabits of data, uh, to develop uh, predictive maintenance. And that means that we will use artificial intelligence uh, to detect weak signals uh, to be able to prevent any failure, and on the other side, to be able to delay maintenance period or maintenance operation if you don't need it to. Uh, for example, if there is no vibration, if the oil quality is very good, or if uh, there is no heat or no detection of any failure. And this will be done on board surface ship, on board submarines, directly, thanks to digital tools, digital system, of course. Uh, and also, uh, we could uh, require support of a uh, shore center dedicated to maintenance or able to help uh, the crew to maintain and to repair or to detect uh, failure uh, if they need. And it's also available for, it's available for all the systems on board. I mean propulsion system mainly, but also uh, a combat system or uh, integrated uh, propulsion uh, system. But isn't there um, a cyber security issue also linked to um, the fact that all this data is coming from the ship and going to, to the land? It is one challenge. Uh, so uh, the ship will always have the decision to transfer data from his own position. And uh, so it is done according to the operation and the uh, commanding officer. But as, uh, as long as the, 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 all the data are transferred to the shore-based uh, center uh, to manage maintenance, but also to manage the uh, cyber uh, elements that has been sent by the fleet to, the, uh, to this shore center, uh, thanks to this cooperation and the big data tra treatment each fleet will have the capability to gather all the data coming from all the ships at the same time and to manage uh, the um, uh, predictive maintenance with big data treatment to manage also solutions, uh, cyber uh, solutions to update the uh, CIMS I was talking about earlier, uh, the, the cyber management system on board the ship. So it will be constantly updated with the, the benefit of all the data sent by the, uh, the ship when they are alongside or at sea, depending on the, uh, the operation. But uh, the uh, cyber concern uh, with the 
cyber on his own, but also the maintenance, is always at the heart of the, uh, the system that we are developing. So uh, they will be uh, highly protected uh, and, and self-secured, actually, to manage this kind of very sensitive uh, data for the uh, operational availability of the, uh, of the ships, of course. Well, we, we call that cyber by design, and this is one of the most important challenge we have to face in the few years. It's interesting because we are talking to treat the, the, uh, the new modern uh, threats, uh, the uh, cooperation and the distribu distributed uh, concept of uh, force uh, is a real uh, concern on the operational point of view, but also on the maintenance point of view. It's really now, you cannot do just on your own, just one ship, one aircraft, one submarine. You need to gather and to, uh, to share all the data. Uh, on the, at the fleet a level, at the force level, at the country level. A global security of cyber. So you, you, you've both been talking about this, it's going to be massive exchange of data actually. And also earlier you were mentioning uh, what you call distributed um, fight or... Warfare. Mm -hmm. Distributed warfare. That means that warships and boats and submarines are going to be exchanging a lot of information, a lot of data. So is there a maybe you will need new communication systems to make sure that all that information gets very quickly from one point to the other one. So is there anything new in that field that you can talk about? Of course, it's, it's already in progress. We, we develop a, a, new, a new concept of uh, cooperative naval surveillance. It's, it will be, we, we already uh, did some uh, experimentation on board uh, aircraft carrier, Charles de Gaulle, Frame, Horizon, uh, the, the destroyer, but it will be uh, natively uh, inside the uh, FDI, uh, FDI frigate. So this uh, cooperative surveillance needs a very, very high performance communication system. So we already improved the, I would say, conventional uh, communication system using the, the latest technologies, but conventional, but we also work ahead uh, and we are a lot of R&D to find new technologies for example, laser, or uh, uh, also using uh, new uh, materials uh, with uh, integrated uh, antennas inside the superstructure uh, of the ship to reduce the signature and to increase the uh, capability of the uh, communication system. It's a fully integrated, unique communication system of the ship. That's really, I'm, I'm in the future, but that's really the way we are working on in, uh, in Naval Group. As usual, uh, the point is uh, the difficulty to extend uh, this network to the underwater world. Uh, so, uh, of course, we, we need to develop, and we are developing uh, new technology, also laser communication underwater, it could work, uh, acoustic communication and stealth acoustic communication, uh, and also long-range communication, maybe using biomimetic uh, also, but a very low uh, frequency or very low uh, power signals, but also using uh, something which is a little bit more common, but uh, thinking uh, uh, it with a different way, we are developing um, cables, specific uh, network with nodes, uh, with optical fiber. The main challenge is not technology of communication, in fact, is to be able to connect all these heterogeneous uh, communication uh, means to build a very efficient and resilient uh, network, a distributed network. Well, gentlemen, that's all very interesting, but we're running out of time. Uh, thank you again for answering my, my question, so Arvin Stefan. And thanks to you for watching this show, which was prepared by Naval Group and James, and we hope to see you soon in another edition. Thank you. Thank you.